see how quick you pick, pick this up. He is risen. He is risen indeed. That's really good. That's pretty good. Let's go one more time. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We are so glad that you're here today. See a lot of folks that we haven't seen for a while, and Easter is kind of like that. And uh, but uh, I, I say that not to make anybody feel bad, but to say that because we really are glad that you're here with us. And I think it's going to be a great morning. I don't know about you, but I just feel such a joy in the Lord. This this year, I think Easter kind of snuck up on me, and then it hit me upside the head hard. Which means I'm really glad for this day, the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we celebrate. And so I say to you, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us join together in worship. Hear now the words of the call to worship, the ones in black, you respond. At the break of dawn, a bird sings. The long night of darkness is over. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is empty. The sun begins to shine. The sun has risen. The sun has risen. Did I miss one? Oh, the tomb is empty. The sun begins to shine. The sun has risen. It's a morning of glory. Now, you folks are never going to come back now. <laughs> it's a morning of glory. Of love of the coming death. Of women spreading good news. Of men turning from despair. It's a morning of joy. For Easter has come again. Love is stronger than death, and we lift our voices in song. Our hymn is number 101, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Stand and sing with me.
our prayers of confession. Beloved, we are God's children because of love, the love God has for us, yet we sometimes fail to respond to God's outpouring of love. Let us confess our sins together. O God of transformation, where we have been fearful and doubting, bring new life. Where we've been hard-hearted and unforgiving, bring new life. Where we've sown discord and wounded others, bring new life. Where we've been selfish and greedy, bring new life. Where we have been tired and confused, bring new life. Now search your own heart for a few moments. There's prayers of confession that only you know of that you need to say. Brothers and sisters, come and join the song. Children and men, everyone, Jesus makes us free to live again. And all God's people said, Amen. Father and son had decided to get themselves a new dog. So they went out to this place where they, he'd heard about advertising puppies. And so uh, they went around back, and there were seven puppies there. And uh, they, they looked at him for a second. They realized there was one of those puppies that was wagging faster than any of the rest. He was, he was really wagging his tail. And so uh, the little boy said, can I have the one with happy endings? I don't think we could ask for more than happy endings, could we? Happy endings of the tough times we've been through, but most of all, happy endings that knowing that we will be Christ, be with Christ at the end. And so we take a look at this word together today. It's Revelation 1, 4 to 8. That might seem a bit strange to talk about Revelation on a day like today. But for me, it shows very clearly um, what it means to be Easter people. You know, we really are Easter people. Everything that is good about us comes from the Lord because Christ is risen, and he is risen indeed. So now hear God's word. 
Again, this is Revelation 1, 4 to 8. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is faith, a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of heaven. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. But I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for this day we get to gather and see each other's faces and smile and be here. But Lord, we're here too because we want to hear what you have to say to us in your word. So may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight and in the sight of all these people that they may grow and learn. In Jesus Christ, amen. People say we're living in a post-Christian age. That is, you know, we don't assume that people are Christians. We don't assume that they, at a certain time, they decided they need to go back to church because people sort of stopped doing that. And sort of a Christianity and all, actually all religion has sort of been pushed aside and uh, it's not really at the center of things. Um, but yet I find when people are hurting and looking for something, Jesus is always there. But this passage comes from a uh, pre-Christian age, which means, you know, the gospel had not spread. And so Revelation was written in the context of persecution by the Romans. And so when, uh, when uh, he, he wrote these words, he was trying to reassure people. What, you know, they, they wanted to be Easter people, but were they really? And so he wrote these words that we see before us. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's interesting to think about how that works itself out. Um, you know, it's, uh, we're living in a non-Christian age, whether it's pre-Christian or post-Christian well, how do we live in that age? How do we become at Easter people in the midst of that? Well, the first thing is we have to live out of the past into the present. What happened in the past was this wonderful stuff that happened on the cross. This wonderful stuff that happened when Jesus rose from the dead and the empty tomb was there. These things are, we remind, remind us that God is really with us. You know, it's, it's just, it's, it's not that we... We live in the past, but we live in the past of what God has done for each one of us. And so if we want to be Easter people, we have to pay attention to what's going on in our lives and what has gone on and pay attention to what the scriptures say, which is that we belong to God no matter what. His blood was shed, his atonement was given, that each of us should belong to him. And so as we face the problems that we do, we remind ourselves of our own baptism, of our own walk with God, of our own at atonement, which means our own at one with God, atonement, at one We remind ourselves of things of the past that help us in the present. Secondly, I think if we want to be Easter people, we have to learn to learn what it means to be a Christian right now, in this world, in this time. You know, it's, a, it's just the noise is so loud around us. And there's so many screens to look at that we don't stop sometimes and be still and listen to what God has to say. If we did that, we would be, it'd be easier for us to be Easter people because God is always speaking into our life. He's always talking about how much he loves us. You know, the Christian faith is not about the past or the future. It's about right now, where you are. Whatever you're going through, God is with you and God has a plan for you. And it doesn't matter what you're going through. He understands it. And he knows that he loves you and he will not forsake you. And these are present facts which really help us. Um, and what happens is that when we live in the present, we live doxological lives. You know, we don't sing the doxology all the time here at Smyrna, but praise God from whom all blessings flow. Remember that? 
And I think that's the way we live our lives, as an act of worship in the every moment that we live. And we give God glory for who God is. We, we just continually do that uh, from our hearts. And um, worship is not 11 o'clock on Sunday. You know, worship is not necessarily on the, on the computers, you know, that so many of us, high five everybody. You know, it's not necessarily just there, but worship is a part of every part of our life. And we do what we do the way we do it because we want to give glory to God in the present. In this moment, hold on to this moment because it might be that the basis of that moment comes from the past. But Christ is a living Savior, not a dead prophet. And so in the present moment, he is loving you and caring for you and is with you no matter what you're going through. Um, because, you know, Christ is risen. Oh, that's, that's not good enough. Because Christ is risen. There we go. There we go. And because he's risen indeed, we can be Easter people in the midst of the present problems of the day. And finally, two times in this passage, we are told that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and that he will return someday. Sometimes we think this is all there is, and we try to do the best that we can. But yet we know that there has to be more. Deep in our hearts we know there has to be more. And that part of that more is that Christ is going to come again. He's not going to leave us with this mess. He's going to tie up the loose ends. He's going to show us what life, what was really going on when we were going through this or that struggle. He's going to continually be alive in our lives. When Jesus was, was uh, killed on the cross, he didn't just become some spirit being until the resurrection. And after the resurrection, he, he didn't disappear. The Bible tells us that he is at the right hand of God the Father Almighty now. And he hears what's going on with you. He's, he is still alive and still real. And there's no other faith or religion that has a living Savior. You know, especially one, you know, that we know is that he is risen. I'm making sure you're awake, so... So we can look to the future. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's coming again. And he's going to be with us in heaven. And the second coming is right around the corner. And we can know that for sure. So we can live out of the past. We can love in the present, loving God. And we can look to the future. Because he is the Alpha and Omega. And he is coming. The second coming is right around the corner. And it doesn't seem to be happening as on our turn, turn, on our timetable, but we know it's coming soon. We always need to be ready. So live out of the past, love in the present, and look to the future. And this will help you be an Easter person. You know, most of all because he's risen. The Golden Gate Bridge Committee had a big problem, you know, they, they didn't know what they were going to do. As they were building the Golden Gate Bridge, people keep falling, kept falling and dying. And every time that happened, they'd have to stop the construction work. They would have to, and this sounds cold, I don't mean for it to be, but it would just stop the process. It was costing them thousands of dollars because of all the people that were being lost on the Golden Gate Bridge. And so they were trying to figure out a solution. And they said, well, we could put a net underneath the Golden Gate Bridge, and maybe that would catch people. And some people said, that would cost us $100,000. Can you imagine what $100,000 was back then? I mean, it would be unimaginable that that would happen. And they said that was too much money. But these things kept happening. And their hearts were broken by the loss of their employees. But also, every time that this happened, the construction ground to a halt, and finally they got desperate enough to finish, to decide to put up the net. So they put up the net, and occasionally people would fall, and, and they would be caught by the net. But always, they'd be rescued. Well, brothers and sisters, what I believe is that when we know that we are Easter people, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid that God is going to reject us. We don't have to be afraid of tomorrow. We don't have to be afraid of anything. And because of that, you can take chances with your life. You can give yourself away in ways that you've never done before. You can be Christ's person, even though it's scary and cold.
costly and difficult because you know the safety net is there. You know that God's going to catch you. He's not going to stop loving you. And so that's the good news of the gospel this morning, brothers and sisters, that no matter what you're going through and no matter what situation you're in, really what you're doing is resting in the arms of God. He's never going to let you go. And so you can go out and be the kind of person that God is calling you to be. And I know there's lots of reasons why we don't do everything that we know God wants us to do. But I think it's really great to know that God has a hold of us. And when I get down, which I do often, I'm that kind of person, you know, I kind of go whoop, whoop, whoop. And when I do get that, this voice speaks to me and says, I love you no matter what. You know, I look over the abyss and I see the dark and then... I, you know, I hear this voice in my head that says, no matter what, I love you. No matter how low you get or bad things get, I love you. And then that becomes a basis for me getting back, you know, back up again when I feel like I've fallen. So I, I just want to encourage you to think about that, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, to be Easter people. You have to remember the past of what God's done for you. And to be Easter people... You need to be aware of the fact that he's at work right now in your life. And to be Easter people, you need to remember that Christ will come again. Because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, he is risen indeed. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our hymn is found on page 113, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Please stand and sing with me. Sisters, what do you believe? 
the affirmation of faith is found in the bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pray with me, would you? Lord, I know that many people here and people that we know have borne the brunt of much sorrow as they've lost and struggled with things. Whether it's just the fact that we're getting older or maybe the fact that this COVID thing happened or maybe because we just get, feel despair about the problems in the world. But sometimes it makes us feel like we're a long way away from you, Lord. And so we ask that if possible we could draw close and maybe even feel you here in this place. Even though it's much more than just feelings, it's the truth that you died and rose again for us. Lord, I do want to pray for Barbara Hewlett and her daughter, Debbie Key, as she's gravely ill. We pray, Lord, that you would be with that family, help them to get through this difficult time. And Lord, I lift up Huey McKellar to you and the just the terrible fall he had, and also the struggles they're having a bit with about his heart. Lord, we can't do without Huey. We need him here with us. So heal him quickly and bring him back. Meanwhile, we will not forget him. And Lord, I pray for Cody Rains. Maybe we pray for him because he's a part of our church family. But maybe we pray for him as someone who will remind us that we have people overseas fighting in this war, at least not physically fighting, but being ready to help, being in harm's way. There are many like Cody. We ask that you would take care of him and preserve him and help him through this difficult time. And there are others on our prayer list, Lord, that we need to remember today. And we ask, Lord, that you would care for them on this Easter Sunday. May they feel a dynamic presence with them knowing that they are not alone as they struggle. And Lord, we thank you so much for the fact that you do love us and that you are a living Savior who's right here. And we thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to pray. It's not hard to know sometimes how to pray, and you've given us this model that we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, we are so blessed. We thank you for all that you give us. We thank you for this chance to give back to you some of what you've given to us. Lord, we need your help. This, uh, this place of worship and service uh, needs your help. And the people that are here need the support and encouragement that only you can bring. And so we ask that people would be generous to make sure that that happens, that, that there is what we need to accomplish what you've called us to do. And so, Lord, we thank you for that, and we pray, Lord, that you would take what we give Multiply it and use it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. In the back there are plates, and as you go, we would encourage you to give as generously as you feel led. Our hymn is number 122, Thine is the Glory. Just a word about it before we sing it. Uh, we're going to sing the refrain every time. It says refl refrain last time only. We'll sing it every time. Please stand as we sing hymn 122. 
and sisters go from this place knowing for sure that you are Easter people because you know that he is risen. He is risen indeed. indeed.